Good morning, guys. I always say good morning because my videos go out in the morning. Now and again, they go out in the afternoon. But hi, folks. Welcome back to the channel. I suppose is the best way of doing it. Um, I'm currently in, um, in the middle of converting my Peugeot Boxer camper van. Um, and today it's quite a crucial little uh, task. And that is to insulate and ply line the ceiling. Um, yeah. Quite worried about this one not quite worked out in my head how it's going to go down um i'm sure it'll be fine but still don't know exactly what's going on with it yet so i've uh, just got to figure it all out and um, big sheet supply like the stuff behind me uh five and a half mil are going to be put on the ceiling and then after that there's um sort of like a finished ply a thinner ply that goes over that but before we get to that stage we need to insulate um so it's the um insulation board um, with some battens in between there just to support um, the overhead cabinets that I want to sort of screw in there and that will also hold the ply up um, so yeah hopefully it goes out that easy anyway so yeah let's just see how we get on I didn't show that in a video but I fitted that whilst I was waiting for the um, floor to dry the other day um, so it's a metal um, I suppose you could call it a rain gutter with an LED light in it as well uh, they suggest you screw it in about three or four points, but I've just used Sikaflex and stuck it in place. There is one sort of uh, hole you have to drill that end for the cable to go through because it's an LED light as well. So obviously when it rains and you open the door, you don't get all the rain falling through. Um, it'll collect off the roof and then just run down the side. Just finished the little door trim off here. So I cut myself a piece from some um, bit of flooring that was left uh, to go around the edge. So this is the depth of the floor. So it's glued to the edge of the floor and the ply and all that kind of stuff. And that trim goes across the top just so that I'm not kicking and, you know, damaging the flooring. So yeah, nice little edging strip all the way over there. I just now need to go and do the back step as well. So I'm just removing both max fans. So they've got access to the hole so once i put my ceiling in um, i can basically come up here um, and drill holes in the corner of the new ceiling um, and then i'll use the multi-tool on the inside to bring out the hole again so i can fit the max fan back in place <laughs> One thing I do want to talk about is today's little gadget of the day. I thought about doing a gadget of the day. Something that like I've just used and thought, you know what? I think this is great. So today's gadget of the day is the EcoFlow River 2. Um, I think it's just such a little cute thing. Hardly weighs anything. Uh, 300 watts inverter, pure sine wave. Uh, 256 watt hours of power, which is plenty enough to run a fridge for a day and a half. As a little bit of an experiment, I've been running my 35 litre fridge on it. Um, it's set to minus three because I like everything cool and it's full of everything in there. Drinks, all the food and everything else. And it's been running that <laughs> for a day now and we're only down to 18%. So, if you went away for a weekend, you could probably charge your phone a couple of times and run a fridge all off the little EcoFlow River 2, which weighs absolutely nothing. So it ran the complete fridge uh, while we were moving into the unit. And I thought, well, I'm just going to leave it on. So it's 100% charged, just ran it until it went out. And it was almost 39 hours. Tech specs on it, it's uh, not to 100% in one hour. <laughs> so like that's flat too fully charged in one hour. A lot of people have said about these, yeah, but they only last a couple of years or whatever. 3,000 cycles, 3,000 charge cycles. So not being funny, but that's every day. So you're using it, discharging it, recharging it every day. That's 3, 
thousand days. That's almost 10 years. 10 years it's gonna last you. So for under a kilowatt hour charge station or power station, I think that is blinking marvelous. It's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in there so you can connect via your phone and manage everything. The inbuilt management software looks after all those controls. So it is pretty brilliant. And it's also got a five year warranty. Five year warranty. Not a lot of things come with a five year warranty these days, do they? No. Yeah. Right, it's enough of this gadget of the day. Off to build the van. Oh, there's links in the video description down below as well if you want to have a look at it. So I'll give you a quick tour of where I'm up to. Um, I don't know if you've noticed as well, but the video titles have changed. Um, DV meant um, daily vlog. And obviously they're not daily anymore. They're not even every other day. Um, because I'm trying to get so much work done on the van that I'm not putting that much effort into filming every day for everything and putting it all into series and then editing and that. Um, my priority right now is obviously getting the van finished. Um, so, um, yeah, they've changed to VB. Yeah, let's give you a little bit of a tour anyway of where we're up to. Um, I got the ceiling done with a um, wooden slats down the middle. So this is to support the final ceiling uh, the roofing um, ply um, and also at the sides here these are to support the cupboards um, so the main idea is cupboards down this side uh, big cupboards down this side uh, come into about there so that your view out of the door isn't sort of really obstructed by cupboards it'll sort of finish just about there um, and then again on this side um, over the bed cupboards obviously then we're going to have the the toilet room which i'm going to continue the cupboards inside albeit on this side they're probably going to be shallower maybe um at the bed end there'll be deeper cupboards but as it comes through to the toilet it'll be shallower and then this area here which is going to be over the seating area will be shallower as well but first of all what we need to really do is finish the ceiling off that panel that comes up from each side so like the pillars over the top that has to be installed with the ceiling in place. So you can't install that panel if you've not installed the ceiling, especially because some of the ceiling goes behind there and into um, what is kind of like over the cab bit over there. So the ceiling is going to float down into there. So that's pretty much what's kind of um, stalling, if you like, this part of the build is, as I've said in previous videos, every step involves about another four or five steps. And it's going through those steps um, in the right order that give you the the finish and the quality and the fit um, you know that well that give me those qualities anyway that I'm looking for so I really am looking for um, you know as best as I can possibly achieve Oop, my lights packed in there are a couple of things on the roof that I'm unsure about um, so the roof is a two-stage system there's um, a five and a half mil ply that goes over the roof um, in that direction. Um, and then there's finishing ceiling board, which goes on to that in that direction across. So just for reference, this is the ceiling uh, finish board. Um, so if we look here, this is five and a half mil ply, and then I'm gonna glue this to it, obviously with the white side facing down. So for this, uh, while I was at Solway Camper Conversions to get the panels, I also bought the ply that they use for the ceiling as well. Um, and I had a quick conversation with a guy called Peter, who actually fits the ceiling, um, to understand how he's doing it. So I thought I'd just explain now that if you are getting this kit and you are unsure about anything, just ring them up. <laughs> They're really helpful. I've just rung you up like five minutes ago because I was like, did he say do it this way or do it that way? So I've just got another refresh of what he told me two weeks ago in my head now. So I know how to fit the ceiling. So the way that he's told me to fit the ceiling is that the, um, the sort of ceiling ply, which is the five and a half mil ply, um, is going to run that way down the van. And then once the full ceiling is covered with the normal ply, the five and a half mil ply, then it's time to put the uh, the finish ply on, which is the essentially the the showpiece 
um, ply which has got the the covering on uh, which is going to match in with all the side panels and that runs that way across so hopefully the structure of the uh, the original ply at the top um, is going to hold the other ply line across it and then as far as that the first sheet of ply or the 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 under ply if you like um, is going to be screwed in that's why all the buttons are there and everything else including the cross beams and everything on the roof and then when you put the other sheet the finished sheet of ply on um, that they just sicker flex so sicker flex it up um, and then use like the roof supports and that kind of thing to uh, hold it in place while it bonds job done <laughs> First of all, I've got to try and fathom away now of using these support poles with some sort of um, probably a ply um, bit of batten or something like that to go across. So that when I stick it up, I've got something that fully supports the layer all over it so it's not going to sag or anything like that. Between the joint of each panel, uh, there's a little strip that you basically just staple to the the ply or whatever um, and then the strip has got a little cap that goes on it so once you've finished the ceiling you pop pop a cap <laughs> hey i'm gonna pop a cap and it's a um yeah so you um put the strip on the finishing strip um and that then seals it all off but yeah i thought i'd let you know where we're up to um and the sides are pretty much almost prepped now um to go on so obviously we'll need to cut out for the window and do all that as well but that panel is obviously dependent on all these being installed, which is dependent on the roof. Which is why I need to do the roof before I can finish the paneling off. So I get it just so. Uh, there's no point buying all this kit and doing all this if you're not going to take the advice of the people that make it and fit it. So ultimately, I'm taking their advice where at all possible. Um, so I don't have to scratch my head and work out how to do things or think things are wrong when actually they're just done differently. And um, yeah, they know what they're doing with this kit and um, and I don't. So I'm just going to do it that way. This is a bit longer than I actually thought. Um, but essentially, we put the final sheet on um, and it needed a lot more support in a lot more places to make sure it glued together correctly um, than we originally anticipated, uh, which does mean it's slowing the process down because we need all the supports to stick it in place. So while we're waiting for that, and we got on with a bit more installation of the uh, wheel arches and the side panels. So it is all ready once we get those other panels fitted. So there's two more panels on the top um, and then we can get that fitted as well. So sorry about that, but I don't want to do a massive long video. Um, just sort of give you a heads up that next time we will be finishing the ceiling off. And hopefully in the same video, we'll be adding all the Solway panels to 